Hey, what's going on guys? This is gonna be my review here for the Frame Arms Durga 2 RE version. So the RE version just once again, just means that this is the version that's been re-released with the updated frame in there, the updated architect frame. Otherwise it's just the same Durga 2. That is actually a variant of the Frame Arms Magatsuki, if I remember correctly, is the original version that came out. And then there's been a couple other versions of that, the, the Durga 1 included. And this version is, I believe the most recent one that's been released, the Durga 2, but it's a pretty cool variant. Obviously it really has that knight in armor motif going for it with obviously the all molded silver colors for most of the plastic there and then you have that really cool clear yellow which looks really interesting and it has the cool pattern underneath the clear yellow which looks really cool as well and then like like the pointy mask has a very kind of knight looking mask uh, motif to that and his weapons as well he's got the lance and the sword which we'll see in a moment but really cool kit and so I'm I'm pretty happy with this it's pretty interesting out, straight out of the box though it does have some issues so we'll get into all of that as always guys a big thank you to USA Gundam store for their support if you guys want to check out some frame arms stuff like this or anything else Gundam and all of that of course too you can check the link to USA Gundam store there down below in the video description and use the coupon code ZAKURILIUS10 to save 10% off everything there on their site all right, let's get into it with the accessories here first. All right, so first up, we've got the standard set of frame arms hands for this. So you've got a set of closed fists there on the kit already. Then we've also got here a set of just open hands like this, and the hands are just molded in that gunmetal color once again. And we've also got a set of weapon holding hands as well. But then non-standard hands included with this kit, we do also have this set for holding its lance and or sword weapons as well for the left and right side. So these are not molded in uh, gunmetal, just regular gray plastic. As you can see, they're just a little bit different style holding hands. So the first thing we've got here is the shield, which has a really cool design. I also have that inlaid clear yellow part in here as well with a little bit of clear parts also showing up through the gaps in the plastic there. Very cool. Here on the back, it's just got the peg, which will just plug onto this side of the arm over there. But you do also have this optional handle part for this as well. So if you fold up that part, you can see there we just got a place where we can plug in this handle, plug that into there, and then that can of course rotate, or you can just rotate the actual handle off to the side like that, which could be useful for holding this in different ways. And the other gimmick that you have here with the shield is that it actually opens up. So these parts open out like this, a little bit sort of like the Zoid's uh, Genosaur, I believe it's called, right? But anyway, it has these parts which open out, which you can of course make into some like pinching claws. But it's so, supposed to be sort of like a melee weapon, I suppose. So those were pretty cool just on these extended arms like that. The only downside is that on the backside, it's just like this hollow gap area there, which is a bit unsightly, but you're probably not ever really gonna see that. So it's not that bad. Still a really cool shield though. I'll, I feel maybe a little bit heavy. So we might have issues with that. We'll come back to that. Then we've got his Lance, which is also in the silver with the cool clear yellow parts here as well. This one doesn't have any gimmicks or anything. It's just a pretty straightforward weapon. You just hold it in the hand. It's got a pretty long handle. So I think if you moved it around well enough you could get a two-handed grip on this probably and the lance is a pretty nice long pointed but of course does have a seam line down the majority of the length up to about here so not all the way to the tip but just to about there it's got a seam down the middle of that and as for the length of this it's going to be coming in right about at 16 centimeters in length but if you wanted something a little bit larger, we do also have this big mega sword here as well with this cool clear red part out the front. Oh, this one as well doesn't really have any gimmicks just yet as it is. Just hold on to that. Again, you have a pretty long handle here for this one as well. This one is going to be coming in at 19 centimeters, so it does get a little bit longer. But wait, if you did want something even larger, you can pull out this clear part. And then we've got these two individual blades. Now these, as you can see, have handles. So you could hold these just individually as they're uh, on their own, just as two separate swords, or you can plug them into this main sword handle, one on the left and one on the right to create the super ultra mega sword here. This thing is gigantic. And again, it's getting a little bit heavy. So I think we might have issues with that. Let's see if the length has changed. This is now at uh, 21 centimeters, a little over 21 centimeters in length now for the ultimate height of that and it's much taller than the frame arms itself although it does have a really high crest on the top of the head so I guess not a, a lot taller but it's definitely much taller than it's just kind of standard head height there and just for a quick size comparison here it is with the HG RX 78 2 and as you can see it's uh, definitely larger than your standard high grade it's about the same size as just kind of a smaller master grade kit which is if you've seen any of my other frame arms reviews, generally about the size of these, for the most part, they're about this somewhere in between the size between a standard high grade and master grade. So the same holds true with this one, but he's definitely got some cool bulk on him with those gigantic knees and shoulders and of course, 
big old head crest on the top of his head as well. Now let's take a closer up look and before I talk a little bit about the articulation, there are a couple of more sort of accessories or option parts that you have for this. So if you don't want to use this big giant armor for the knee, you can remove that and then you have the option of just putting of just putting this tiny little cap on the front of the knee there instead like that if you preferred that but just for the sake of keeping this how it looks on the front of the box we're gonna just gonna keep that armor on there and then up here on the head first of all this like helmet part on the top of the head is pretty easy to just pull off of there and you just kind of have like the base head in there which is so pretty ugly and goofy looking if I do say so myself so it definitely needs this part here on the top to look cool in my opinion but almost sort of has a kind of very similar look and shape to the Shinanju Stein in a way but anyway you have this optional part here for the head crest for when it goes into jamming mode about to be jammed right, so to swap out this connector piece here and plug that back into it and then the crest is folded back like that so it doesn't actually move it's not a moving part you just swap out that part there in the center to adjust the angle of the head crest but that little part there falling off the back of the head just now is a good transition into talking about the articulation which i don't want to do too in depth because honestly this kit is a little bit floppy as you can see here in the midsection here well here's a look at the articulation of that but you can't really bend it forward because it's just going to fall backwards because of the weight of the backpack parts on here and then these knee parts do tend to just fall off really easily if you touch them wrong and so the kit does have a, quite a few loose points on there but nothing that I wouldn't say couldn't be fixed really easily with just a little bit of glue so that's why I meant earlier that straight out of the box it's a little bit loose and then you do have the problem with the silver uh, injected plastic leaving some pretty bad nub marks in certain areas and most of the kit it's not really very noticeable but in some certain areas you can really see those nub marks and it's just unfortunate there's nothing that you can do about it with uh, injected kits like this uh, there's nothing that you can do to avoid having nub marks on there even if it's sanded perfectly super smooth you're still gonna have that mark in there it's just because of how the silver is injected through the gate there into the parts so anyway just fully painting the kits gluing some of the looser areas just going to be your best bet to enjoy this kit in its fullest but straight out of the box it does still look obviously pretty cool here so just a few other points of articulation we'll talk about the head ultimately will go up to about there or down all the way to there the shoulder does rotate forward and back a little bit like that as it's just this kind of standard uh, shoulder part of the architect frame this part here on the outside of the shoulder doesn't move up and down but you can rotate that around a little bit like so and then this lower half of that actually does move down like that but it's not really for any particular reason it's because these parts from the different variants of it are kind of swapped around so I think on other versions of the kit I believe this part is on the front of the shin or something because this is kind of sticking up so much you can really only get the arm up so high before that's kind of crashing into the head there so it is a little bit hindering the arms otherwise work pretty normally rotation there you have the standard elbow joint double joint there in the elbow there's no ball joint in the wrist it's just a straight peg into there but you can move this forward and back a little bit like that and then of course just rotate the hand as well you have this armor piece on the back side of the arm with this pretty nasty seam line down the center of that but if you remove this piece you just got your standard hard point there on the back of the arm these big parts here at the backpack can be moved up and down you can also rotate them side to side but if you're moving them both out to the side they're going to be kind of starting to run into each other here at the top so it kind of just makes sense to just kind of leave them straight on like that for the most part but <laughs> there goes his leg falling off but if you do extend these out this part underneath will fold out like so like that if you wanted to have that folded out but just i got some detail up underneath there again these are pretty much i think just meant to or just best handled by just kind of just keeping them as they are like that they look pretty cool here on its back the legs can go out to the side to about there forward and back obviously not going to be an issue as it doesn't have any skirting armor around on there so we got some rotation there at the top of the leg standard double joint here in the knee is going to give you more than 90 degrees but the armor kind of restricts it to about to there down here at the ankles you can move those side to side these really long feet do have a little bit of a toe bend here at the front but not really all that much but you can point the feet all the way back down to there just not really gonna move forward all that much and then up underneath the feet there so that's gonna look up there all right so ultimately I gotta say I really love the look and style of this kit and while it may be a little bit rickety straight out of the box it, and it does have a couple of seam lines here and there on there 
uh, I think it's gonna be a really cool kit when it's all uh, you know painted up and everything. Just the style of it is really cool, and the weapons and just the overall style of the the mecha, just having the knight theme and then the knight style weapons, the big giant shield, the lance, the giant sword options that you have there, and you have just some really cool options with the weapons. No ranged weapons if you wanted some sort of rifle or pistols or something like that, but obviously with Kotobukiya's modeling support goods line, you have a ton of options available if you wanted to go for that. But I think the weapons that you have included with this are uh, you know very fitting to just the design overall. And while the silver plastic straight out of the box is kind of a mixed bag, it does look pretty cool for the most part, but it does make the nub marks and the seam lines very apparent on there. Uh, I think the clear yellow and the clear red parts of the blade as well, the clear parts in general for this kit really add a lot to it. They look really super cool. The uh, patterns, like the design on the underside of the clear yellow parts looks really super cool, especially laid against the silver plastic there. So it just makes so you can really see the design inside those clear parts really well and they just look really cool. They add a lot to this overall design, I think. And then the clear red parts as well for the big giant blades on the swords, I also like those. If those would have also been yellow, I think it would have maybe looked a little bit strange. I like that we have clear yellow parts for the lance and the shield. I think that works because they're not like the main parts, they're just like accent parts in there. But if the clear parts for the sword blades would have been yellow as well, maybe look would have looked a bit odd. So I, I like that those are in clear red, that's pretty cool. Uh, if they would have just been in just plain clear, that maybe would have been probably the best option if you want to paint, because then you can paint them in whatever color you want. But if you're not painting, or if you're a fan of the clear red, then that's good. If you wanted them to be in clear blue or something like that, I suppose you might be a little bit out of luck. Although I'm not sure in the other different variants of this kit if those are in a different color. I would have to go back and check, but that's possible. It definitely does have some weight issues with the shield. If you want to have it in like some certain poses, especially with the claws extended out, uh, you're going to have a little bit of problems with that. Again, just straight out of the box anyway without doing any work to it. If you do want to tighten up the joints, then you can fix that problem relatively easily. But straight out of the box, uh, the shield and especially the big, big sword are going to be giving you a little bit of issue just with the weight of those. But overall, I mean, you know, it's not really all that bad. And again, it's nothing that a little bit of fixing can't handle for this. So definitely a really cool kit. One of my favorites, I think, that I built with Frame Arms line so far. I just like how cool and unique it is. So like I, like I always say, I, I like building something different and unique every now and then. Uh, like my big giant robots and Gundams and you know all that kind of stuff But having something like this with a little bit different flavor to it every now and then is always nice And so really cool kit and still plenty of hard points and space to customize this out some more if you want as well So if you want to go crazy with it, there's plenty of ways you could go about doing that as well too here So thank you guys all so much for watching if you have any more questions or comments about the kit Feel free to post those down below in the comments section. Thank you so much for that. And as always, again, thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.